Cultural heritage sometimes is put as something secondary. Why? There's much more important things. There's health, there's the economy, there's security, cultural heritage. But we have to understand that cultural heritage is a core principle or is a core phenomenon of creating something like a communitarian form of identity. I remember, or we remember, we Austrians know it because it's a part of the Austrian history after the Second World War. Uh, you must imagine Austria was completely destroyed. First World War, Second World War. It was a big country before the First World War. It ended up as a very small country after the Second World War, after the Austrian-Hungarian Empire collapsed. Nobody believed that this country can survive, even between the First and the Second World War, because the industry was in the Czech Republic, uh, uh, the farmers were in Hungary or Ukraine, right? So in the East. So everything Austria had was mountains and a bit of culture. But after the Second World War, as the bell of the Wiener Stephansdom was brought back, was recreated the Pumering, right? Our famous bell. The bell of the Wiener Stephansdom was recreated, put back into the Stephansdom. And as the state opera started to play Fidelio, the first opera after the Second World War, Beethoven's Fidelio, the big opera of freedom, as we all know, I think the Austrian identity started to reconvene around something again, understanding that we have to start and that we are somebody and that we have something like a core story of our national history. Huh? Uh, so the symbolism of cultural heritage and everything which is connected to it is so important for a modern democratic and liberal society because it gives us something like the story and the backbone and the way how we can consolidate with ourselves around uh, a golden, uh, eine goldene Mitte, uh, a golden center of what we understand as our self-conception. And I always, you know, uh, as the Balkan Wars were on top of um, its cruel performance, what did the, uh, now, you know, the now Serbians do in Sarajevo? They destroyed the 500-year-old beautiful library in Sarajevo, which was a center of cultural identification on the on the Western Balkans. So we know that the war also is a war to destroy identity. And the mission against this is a strong conception and self-awareness about who we are, what we want to achieve, and mostly this is symbolically lived, designed and created through what we today call cultural heritage. Because it's not something which has to do with history. Yes, of course, it has this historic background, but it's something to do. It gives us an as assembling space of discourse and of self-perception, which gives us motivation, a strong identity, and a good look, a good vision into the future. So what we are discussing here, this is how I understood also Jana's mission, is not something which is secondary, but especially for the Ukrainian history, as we all know in the last 20, 30, 50, 70 years, a very strong narrative which is created through a sim symbolism which is assembling around cultural heritage. So we are talking about something very, very core here. And I think this gives us a great relevance and also through you, each of every of you, right, participating in something where we want to be very practical, as I understood, but also very forward looking. But on the other side, it gives us, I think, something like a central mission, because, you know, even no matter if the future of the Ukraine is European Union, and we all know and we learned the history from the Balkans that this can take 20 years, 15 years. We don't know. This is uh, uh, dependent from so many policy actors 
uh, in the European context that is something which we don't have in our hand. But what we have in our hand is the fate of your country. Um, and it's uh, embedment, in embedment in something like a strong cultural uh, um, setting, which of course has to do with heritage, but of course has to do with the role culture plays in building a modern form of democracy, uh, uh, living the European values we all um, share and protect. Morning. Morning. I would l just, as Erste Foundation, as the institution who hosts this meeting, want to give you the feeling that we consider this as something very, very, very important, very, very existential. Also because we have this experience from other countries, from other situations in history, and we know that beginning kind of and starting always is looking at the roots and how they are displayed in the modern context. So thank you all who traveled from so far uh, that you that you come here, right? That you made it <laughs> finally. Um, feel yourself welcome. You're at home here. Um, you're also invited and you can come even when you're not invited. We are an open house. Our coffee is good, but not so good. You know, stay strong. This war is not over yet, but it needs, it needs so much of energy and character um, to, to keep alive huh? and to be able to cope with such atrocities and with everything what happened uh, in the last months. So, we have to support this character through the work we do here. And I think we do it by putting always our fingers on what at the end of the day creates the identical factor in what we as individuals want to achieve into the future. That creates already today a strong living signal for those who are in the fight and have to survive such a situation. Don't underestimate that. That's completely important. So I think what we do here is really relevant and we are in the, uh, in the honorable position to be able to support it. So I wish you a great meeting, um, feel yourself at home and I'm looking forward to the results. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for your support.